<laughs> um, okay. Uh, so are we good to start or should we? Yeah. Okay. Ask away. Uh, okay. So one of the best things about the Slumber Party Massacre is how it focuses in on its uh, women characters. Can you tell us how important this was in your filmmaking process? Yeah, well, uh, telling women's stories, I think, is important to me on every project. It's, it's why I became a filmmaker, to try and bring that voice to films. Um, I've always been a huge fan of, of genre. Uh, you know, I love horror and science fiction and fantasy. But, you know, growing up uh, as a young girl, I'm a fan of those kinds of stories. I often didn't see a lot of women characters uh, in those movies um, or those books um, and really wanted to see more women in those stories because, you know, as a fan, I felt left out. And then as a, you know, when I became a director, I was like, well, that's something that I can contribute. So uh, it's something that's always been like first and when I signed on to a project is, you know, who are the women characters? What are we saying about women? Uh, who are the women involved creatively? And this project is not only, of course, a legacy project from, you know, the first horror franchise written and directed by women, uh, but it also had a great woman uh, screenwriter attached, Suzanne Kylie, who I've been a fan of for quite some time and I've been wanting to work with her. So, you know, you put those things together and for me, it was just a dream project. Awesome, thank you. Well, you know, I'm so excited and what a time to be alive to be a horror fan. I don't know if you can see it hanging, but this is my chunky uh. bear because I want I, you know, I wanted to bring emphasis to sci-fi not only bringing back Chucky which premiered this week, but then Slumber Party Massacre premiering this week. I mean, sci-fi we? knows what we want it and they're <laughs> delivering. I'm so excited to uh to be a part of this. Um, I do want to know, and I really enjoyed this film. Oh, thank you. Um, and I and I and I and I got to see it obviously early as a screener, and um, I, and because it is a sci-fi uh, film, I wanted to know what was your challenges in uh, you know doing this film for television format, and how much more does the of the film exist that you may have had to remove <laughs> because of timing parameters or all sorts of different things, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you know, it, it was actually probably easier than people think. Uh, it, this is my second horror movie for sci-fi. Um, I made a movie for them called uh, The Banana Splits Movie, um, which was also horror and, you know, rated R and had a, a lot yeah. of gore and a, and a lot of violence. And, and I had full support on that film. This film, you know, we were always aiming for a primetime screening. So we, we'd have to adjust it a little bit. So the course language is gone that, you know, is in the festival version. Um, there's some pixelated nudity <laughs> so that we can, you know, reach a wider audience. Um, but, I, but we didn't actually add any scenes um, and I didn't have to change the vision or, or anything uh, about, you know, when I put this film together. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a slightly safer film, but, uh, but not very different from my original, you know, vision. Uh, yeah. It's just a, a, a bit of a, a challenge when you're, you know, when you're remaking um, a series known for its excessive nudity. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know what so I'm getting get that. Yeah, so I haven't quite delivered the levels of nudity of the original. Um, I'd be happy to do that on another project if anyone's interested. <laughs> As a fan, I'm interested. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, were there any particular influences from the original movies that inspired parts of the remake? So many influences. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's, especially the first film, which I know really well, um, you know, the, the characters inspired our characters, you know, my favorite character from the original movie is, is Courtney, the younger sister who I just absolutely love. You know, she's so, uh, her, she has a very dry wit and, she, and she's very much her own woman, uh, even though she's the youngest character. And uh, I know when we were talking about trying to find our own new generation characters for this, and I was talking with Suzanne, our screenwriter, I said, well, maybe we should make it all about the younger character. Maybe it should all be from, you know, the little sister's point of view. And in the end, we, we didn't quite do that, but we still have our Courtney character, who's Alex, uh, the younger sister, who is definitely a, a callback to my favorite character from the original film. And then, you know, the death sequences, there's some that are dr directly inspired by the kill sequences in the original. Uh, some are, are pretty close to shot for shot, uh, if people are looking for them. And then there's some that, you know, we just created uh, out of our own heads, uh, you know, out of Suzanne's brilliant <laughs> writing. Suzanne makes some, writes amazing horror movies. So, you know, she had incredibly creative ideas for kills that we hadn't seen before that we wanted to try and, and make really original and put our stamp on. Um, so it was a total blend between, you know, uh, lots of um, Easter eggs, 
and callbacks to the original film and then just our own, you know, opportunity for creativity. It was awesome. Yeah. Overall. Thank you. <laughs> Nobody's asked me about the goose lamp, which is one of my favorite <laughs> callbacks to the original movie. It's just like one of those little things where it's like that goose lamp was so memorable. We had to yeah. make a goose lamp because we couldn't find one in South Africa. We had to like make one from scratch. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you you obviously have a very vibrant personality. I want to know at any given point of time in 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 the filming of this, did you ever just look down at the script and while directing and just just bust out laughing like I cannot believe what we're doing right now? Because the film, as much as it is gory, as much as it is called Best Original, it is absolutely fun. You can't help but to just sit back and just say, "Wow, this movie is nuts." pedal to the metal with it but for you although you had a responsibility in directing this film did you ever just kind of sit back and just laugh at the, the certain events that were happening all the time <laughs> uh we had we had so much fun on set i mean the, the script was hilarious the actors were hilarious i was definitely smothering laughter behind the monitor <laughs> all the time and sometimes you know i didn't really expect it you know there's this one scene where in the movie where Russ is chasing Dana through the woods in the fog, you know, and he's running after her with the drill yes. and we're all huddled behind, huddled behind the camera. And, you know, as they ran off and just as they enter the fog and start to disappear, I could hear him ad living in the, in the woods. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> and we, the whole crew just lost it. We're just, we just couldn't, it was so ridiculous out in the middle of nowhere. And Rob is <laughs> screaming his love into the night, into the forest. And we all laughed really, really hard. So yeah, it was, um, it was a pleasure to, to have the opportunity to make such a film, and we all had a lot of fun doing it. That's awesome. Um, here's a spoiler question. Uh, the twist yeah. in the middle of the movie uh, and flipping the script almost entirely into, from what you're typically expecting of uh, the slasher genre, can you share what inspired to uh, make this decision? Yeah, well, I think early on we knew we wanted to to play with the preconceptions of, of this story. Um, and we want to be, as much as we want to be an interesting story with, with new characters, we also wanted to be commenting on, you know, expectations in the, genre, in the, in the horror genre. So one of our first ideas was, well, why don't we start up the movie with a sort of, you know, a little brightly lit, a little cheesy, little, you know, a real callback. So it looks like we're just going to absolutely just remake the original with no changes to sort of get people, you know, into that expectation. And then as the movie progresses, they'll start to learn more about the characters and they'll start to second guess themselves and think, oh, you know, maybe I don't understand the situation. Maybe these people have more layers and more depth than I thought. Maybe I've misjudged them, you know, and then they'll start to become critically engaged and start to see, uh, you know, the different layers, the meta layers of what we're saying about the horror genre. Um, and it works fantastic. While, Oh, thank you. And then yeah, because like believe... the midpoint is really where everything flipped, and I absolutely fell in love with the movie. But sorry, go ahead. Oh no, it's great. Yeah, well, I mean, I hope we surprise people because you know I wanted, in a way, there's a lot of red herrings in the first part of the film. You know, you want people to to kind of lower their expectations, <laughs> have fun, but like not really think that anything new or interesting is going to happen, and then you know, kind of surprise them. So uh, hopefully, yeah, hopefully the midpoint is a big surprise for everyone and. Uh, you know, she kind of shakes them into paying attention uh, as we sort of go into the more layered part of, of the story. 100%. I love it. And the pillow fight particularly just made me like <laughs> falling out laughing. I was like, wow, we, you really went there. It was, it was brilliant, honestly. I just, nothing shy of brilliant. At least I think so. Yeah. Oh, thank you. We had a lot of fun shooting that. <laughs> it took a really long time and they were fed yeah. everywhere. <laughs> it was really insane. <laughs> and and I, I, I think Christian, Oh, Christian go ahead. Has a, oh, I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. I think oh, you're Christian fine. has if a good point. If you want to just wrap, wrap it up right here after your, your question, then yeah. um, thank you. Yep, yep. And I think Christian has a point because putting it on television, you know, you're um, exposing it to the millennials who have a shorter attention span. I think by flipping the film in the middle, it almost feels like a beginning of a new film. So you pay homage to the original film in the beginning and you still have that audience and you're bringing them along. And then if the millennials was like, oh, I'm tired of this already, it's like, okay, cool. We got something else for you. And then it flips <laughs> and then it gets crazy and it gets fun. So I absolutely love the strategy for it. And that's kind of what I was kind of wondering with my first question about what was the strategy of kind of putting it on television. 
but for my for my final question, um, I think you know, uh, you know, since we can uh, put this part in in, in terms of spoilers, um, when you have such strong women characters, you also have something that was kind of underlining outside of all of the horror, and that was more of the mother daughter. Uh, relationship and a validation which I thought was a super strong message that was just intertwined and everything Um, where did you personally feel um, about putting that element of this film into it and and where would you say you kind of channeled that purpose within uh, your own personal life oh that's a really great question yeah the the relationships between the mothers and the daughters in the story are really key Um, and they say so much and I don't know if it's because I have a really difficult relationship with my mother, but I really wanted to kind of talk about um, intergenerational trauma and and yeah. also um, also internalized misogyny, which I think is is a, a topic we don't explore very much. Um, you know the way that the way that we enforce gender rules um, yeah. on you know on ourselves and on our own children. So yeah, I really want to talk about some of those themes and you know and and thread them in there so that we have a lot to say about them. The actors and I talked about those themes constantly. Yeah. Um, and I think they brought so many layers to the performance that hopefully even it's you know it's worth rewatching just to see those those performances and see all the things they're bringing. That is awesome. It's a beautiful answer. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, thank you guys. Much.